Hi, I'm Scott Best. I'm a CFII with Outer Banks Flight, and we're going to talk a little bit today about holding procedures. First, a holding procedure you can think of as a safe block of airspace where air traffic control can place you or where you can stay until it's time to move on to something else. Uh, in that area, you're protected from collision with other aircraft as well as terrain. So when do we have to hold? Uh, in general, holding is required when it's either published or required by procedure, uh, in such cases of the missed approach procedure, for example, or um, uh, holding pattern course reversal. Also, air traffic control can assign you a hold anytime they have a conflict due to weather or traffic. Uh, in essence, most holding patterns are going to be based on a fix. Uh, generally, this is defined as a navigational aid, such as a VOR, an NDB, a VOR intersection, or GPS waypoint, although in a, a few cases, air traffic control will assign you a present position hold. But we'll talk more about how to do that when we do the GPS section. In general, the hold has a fix, an inbound leg, an outbound leg, an outbound turn, and an inbound turn. The turns can either be to the right, in the hold, which is considered to be a standard holding pattern, or to the left, which is considered to be a non-standard holding pattern. Leg lengths for most general aviation aircraft at lower altitudes are one minute in time or a defined distance via DME or GPS, assigned by GPS, or published on the procedure. What we use here is this magnet will be our fix. We'll say this is a VOR for the purposes of this particular presentation. And ATC has assigned you to hold south of the VOR on the 180 radial. We don't know where we are in relation to the VOR just yet, and we'll say we're using a standard holding. Outbound turn, the outbound leg, the inbound turn, and the inbound leg. Back to the fix. One of the issues many pilots have is determining quickly what entry method they need to utilize into the hold. There are three entry methods. There's the direct, the parallel, and the teardrop. An easy way to determine which method to use to enter can be used with your Omni bearing selector on your VOR. Now in my plane, I have dual VORs. I think most of the planes do. Uh, in that case, I'll have my Nav 1 navigating me directly to the VOR. I'll take the Omni bearing selector on my Nav 2 VOR, and I will turn it so that the outbound radial is at the top dead center of the indicator. Now in order to determine my correct entry method into the hold, I take a straight edge. This can be a plotter, a folded piece of paper, a pen or a pencil, or an end root chart. And I will place it over the indicator. For a right hand holding pattern, I'll then rotate the piece of paper 20 degrees right or clockwise. And what this gives me is my sectors for holding pattern entry. If my airplane is currently flying a heading of between 110 degrees and 180 degrees, this sector, my holding pattern entry will be a teardrop. If my heading to the fix is between 180 degrees and 290 degrees, this sector. My holding pattern will be parallel. If it's any other heading below the straight edge, then the holding pattern entry will be direct. Direct entries are fairly easy to accomplish. We fly to the fix. We graph out the sectors quickly. This will be our teardrop sector. parallel sector, and our direct entry sector.
First, we're going to apply to the fix for the direct entry. We're going to cross the fix, and then we're going to make a standard rate turn to the outbound heading. When we are a beam of the fix, or wings level, we fly our outbound leg for one minute, or the specified time or distance air traffic control gives us. And then we make a standard rate turn, again back to the right, to intercept the radial and fly inbound back to the fix. We make corrections for wind to stay on our appropriate headings and radials, to stay within the protected airspace, and keep our inbound leg time as close to one minute or as assigned by ATC as possible. Now for the parallel entry, from say this direction, again we cross the fix. After crossing the fix, we turn to the outbound heading again. This time, we're paralleling the inbound heading as we go outbound, hence the term parallel entry. Once we cross the fix and make our turn, we fly outbound for one minute, then we make a turn inbound. And this turn will be a turn of greater than 180 degrees, with the goal of intercepting the inbound radio before we reach the fix. I recommend a turn of 225 to 230 degrees. Then we fly back to the fix, and then we begin our standard holding pattern of outbound turn, outbound leg, inbound turn, inbound leg, again with the goal of staying within the protected airspace and keeping the leg time or distance that which is assigned by ATC as close as possible. The parallel entry is a little different. sometimes a little harder to remember because it's slightly different depending on whether you fly a left or right hand pattern. On the teardrop entry for a right hand pattern, you fly to the fix, but instead of turning to the outbound heading when you cross the fix, you turn to a heading of the outbound heading minus 30 degrees. This is 180 outbound. 180 minus 30 is the heading of 150 degrees. So after you cross the fix, you're going to turn to a heading of 150 degrees, fly for one minute, then make an inbound turn back to intercept the radial and track back to the fix. slightly different procedure for a left-hand holding pattern. And first, we'll talk about how to determine our entry on left-hand holdings. I'll go ahead and draw the left-hand pattern so we can graph it out. There's our left-hand pattern. Now, same as before, set the outbound heading on the number two omni bearing selector, place your straight edge, but now for the left hand pattern, you rotate the straight edge 20 degrees to the left or counterclockwise. Now this gives you your teardrop entry is going to be any heading between 180 and 250 this sector, we teardrop entry. Any heading approaching the fix between 180 and 070, parallel entry in this sector. And everything under the straight edge again will be direct entry. So we'll graph this again like we did for the right hands. Teardrop, parallel entry, Direct entry and parallel entries are exactly the same as for right hand turns, except we're just making opposite turns. For the direct entry, you're still going to fly to the fix, turn left to the outbound heading, fly out for a minute or specified distance, standard rate turn back to intercept the inbound radial back to the fix. Parallel entries, fix, outbound, again, you'll turn into the holding pattern, a turn
turn of greater than 180 degrees, 225 to 230, to intercept the radial before reaching the fixed. The difference is the teardrop. On the teardrop, you'll cross the fixed. But for the left-hand pattern, instead of flying a heading of the at-band radial minus 30 degrees, when you fly the left hand, you fly the outbound heading plus 30 degrees. So cross the fix, and instead of flying the 180 minus 30, or 150, you fly the 180 plus 30 degrees. So when you cross the fix, you're going to turn to a heading of 210 degrees, and fly that for one minute, and then make your standard rate turn inbound to intercept the rate. And that's your teardrop. Any questions regarding holding entry? Thank you.